So, all right, in 86, we have the graph of the function f with domain 0 to 7 shown here, and it consists of a quarter circle, so from here 0 to 3, and a segment with slope negative 1, so this portion here. Let b be a positive number such that the integral from 0 to b of f of x dx equals 0. What is the value of b? Okay, so... Um, since b, since this whole integral is going to be 0, and we're starting from here, essentially, we want to find the value of b in this portion from the 3 to 7, such that if you were to um, basically integrate this, this region, so this, for example, let's say this is b. We don't know, I'm not saying b is there, but since the, if we integrated this quarter circle, it would be a positive quantity. But integrating this th from three up, upward, this will give you a negative quantity. So you wanna basically find the, the opposite value of this so that it cancels out with that. I don't know if I explained it that well, but let me, but let me try it again. Whatever this value is, let's say it's 10. Let's say it's, let's say it's 10. We, we want to find up to what value such that this, would, this area of the triangle will be negative 10 so that it cancels out with that. So let's find the, let's find the area of this first, or the, let's define the integral of that. So that would be the integral from 0 to 3 of f of x dx. And since we're told it's a quarter circle, it's going to be 1 fourth pi times the radius squared, whatever the radius is, and that's 3. So pi, 1 fourth pi 3 squared. So that, so this integral or that the area of that quarter circle is 9 fourths pi. So we have to then solve the integral that will be equal to negative 9 fourths pi. So we set negative 9 fourths pi equal to the integral starting at 3 up to b. Of, of, the, of this equation. So this equation has a slope of negative 1. And since that's a slope of negative 1, that means it would, you know, if it was to continue like that, its y-intercept would be three. So its equation would be negative x plus three dx. So we want to basically evaluate this integral so that we get this value. So let's let's go, let's see what we get from here. So we go um. Let's go to the next line. Taking the antiderivative, negative x squared over 2 plus 3x times 3 to b. This would be equal to negative b squared over 2 plus 3b minus negative 9 halves. plus three times three, so plus nine. And this whole quantity has to equal negative nine fourths B or negative nine fourths pi. Because you want to solve for the value of B that will make it equal to this. So working our way through, would we get negative one half B squared plus 3b, negative 4 halves plus 9, so, or negative 9 halves plus 9 to so 4 and a half. So this would just be minus, uh, minus 4.5. Equal to negative 9 fourths pi.
And so what we're going to notice is that this is a, actually a quadratic equation. We have negative one half b squared plus three times b. And this final, this, this portion here, let's add this nine fourths pi to the, the left side. We would get negative 4.5 plus 9 fourths pi. And that'll be equal to zero. So this is actually a quadratic equation. So basically, um, see, it's like ax squared plus bx plus c. So we can basically just graph this and solve for the zeros. So we want to find the zeros of this quadratic. So for that, let's use our graphing calculator. When you action function. Let's see what we get. So we get, let's go negative 0.5 x squared plus 3x, just treating the b like it's x, plus, and just so I don't make a mistake, negative 4.5 plus 2.25 pi. Graphing this, and I just got to find the zeros. And see, there's my there's my quadratic, or yeah, there's my quad, there's my parabola. And since see, since b has to be um positive or you know greater than three but less than seven, we know it's going to be this value over here. So then we'll just analyze that. And our zero there will be six point seven six. Couldn't really think of another way to go about this. Maybe there's some clever trick, but this is like this is like the this is I think the best way to go if you really want to understand this. So the answer would be D. All right, um, 87. The first derivative of the function g is given by g prime of x is equal to the cosine of pi x squared for x between negative 0.5 and 1.5, on which of the following intervals is g decreasing? Okay, so we just wanna see where, um, we just wanna see where it's negative. Because this is, this is the derivative, and when the derivative is positive, it tells you it's increasing. When the derivative is negative, it's gonna tell you that g is decreasing. So let's go ahead and let's graph this one as, again. Let's graph, using our graphing calculator. Let's delete that. Graph this new guy. Whoa, crazy. Let's zoom in on that because we only care, we only care about the interval negative point five to one point five. So one more time. Okay, so we can see it's decreasing over here, somewhere like in there. Let's draw a sketch of this. And my scale is going by 0 0.2, so then 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6. So I can see it's going between 0 0.6 and 0 0.8, somewhere between 0 0.6 and 0.8. And then pops back up between one and like somewhere like past like 1.2-ish. So let's see what let's see what those zeros are. Oh, 
lower bound. And so that's 0 0.7 ish. 0 0.701. Yeah, let's look at the other one. Everyone's like 1.225. So it's decreasing on this interval here because the derivative is negative. Or in, this is G prime actually. So it's decreasing from 0 0.707 to about 1.22. So the answer would be C. Eighty-eight at the height above the ground of the passenger on a Ferris wheel. T minutes after the ride begins is modeled by the differentiable function h, where h of t is measured in meters. Which of the following is an interpretation of the statement h prime of seven point five equals fifteen point seven zero eight? Okay, so h of t tells you the height um, above the ground of a passenger at some time t. So h prime of t would tell you how the height is changing, how the height of change, how the height above the ground is changing at that time. So h prime of 7.5 is saying that at t equals 7.5, so at 7.5 minutes, the height above the ground of the passenger is changing at a rate of 15.708 meters, you know. Meters, um, let's see, so yeah, meters, yeah, meters, yeah. So let's look to see what best matches it, what best matches that. So we're looking at the rate of change of height. So it's not gonna be A, not, not that passenger height above the ground is increasing. So close, but not 7.5 meters above the ground. This is time, 7.5 is a time. Passengers height above the ground is increasing by 15.708 meters per minute, seven and a half minutes after the ride begins. All right, so that there we go. That's our answer. The answer would be D.